I'm Astronomy Magazine Senior Editor Rich Talcott. Today I'll be discussing how to use a star chart. The first question most beginners ask is, how do I find my way around the sky? The easiest place to start is with an all-sky map, like the one you'll find in the center of every issue of astronomy. I happen to have the March issue with me. Open it to the center and you'll see the circular map we call the Star Dome. I've mounted this map on cardboard to make it easier for you to see how to use it. Because the sky lies overhead, we designed the map to be held above your head. Let's start our tour in the western sky. Find the big yellow W on the map's right side and orient it so the W lies at the bottom as you look due west. Late on March evenings, you'll see the familiar constellations of winter descending toward the horizon. Orion and Taurus remain prominent, as do their brightest stars, Rigel, Betelgeuse, and Aldebaran. Next, shift your gaze to the southern sky. Turn the map 90 degrees counterclockwise and place the yellow S at the bottom. About one-third of the way up, you'll spot the sky's brightest star, Sirius, which resides in the constellation Canis Major. Above it gleams Procyon, while Gemini's twin stars, Castor and Pollux, stand nearly overhead. In March 2014, the planet Jupiter lies in the western part of Gemini, to the right of Castor and Pollux as you look up. Note that as you face south with the map overhead, east lies to your left and west to your right. This arrangement looks odd when you look down on the map, but it's perfectly logical as you look up. Now let's take a look at what lies to the east. The spring constellations are returning to view, anchored by the bright constellations Leo and Ursa Major. Ursa Major's claim to fame is the group of seven luminaries known as the Big Dipper. To find the other bright stars and constellations scattered across March's evening sky, simply turn the map to match the direction you're facing. We plot the stars on the Star Dome as they appear from 35 degrees north latitude, so the map works well if you live between 25 degrees and 45 degrees. This covers most of the United States. And the map gives a good approximation of the sky from as far north as 50 degrees latitude and as far south as 20 degrees. Each month's map depicts the sky in late evening, after twilight has faded completely. The exact times appear at the top left of the map, but the sky doesn't change a lot within an hour or two of these times. The brownish line you see curving from east to west represents the ecliptic, the apparent path of the sun across our sky. Of course, the sun is not out at night, but the ecliptic still serves a useful function. All the solar system's planets lie near the ecliptic, so this is the area to look for our celestial neighbors. In March 2014, only Jupiter and Mars appear in the late evening sky. All stars appear as points of light to the naked eye, but a map with nothing but small points on it wouldn't help much. On our map, we show the brighter stars as bigger circles. Astronomers measure a star's brightness on what's called the magnitude scale. We show the scale for our map at the lower left corner. In keeping with ancient tradition, the fainter a star, the higher its magnitude. A star of magnitude 0.0, .0 appears 100 times brighter than a star of magnitude 5.0. Under a dark sky, the brightest stars show hints of color. We show this on the star dome as well. The hottest stars glow with a bluish tinge and can be up to five times the sun's surface temperature. Slightly cooler stars appear white, followed by yellow stars, like the sun. Still cooler ones are orange, and finally, red stars. The last of these are typically only half the sun's surface temperature. Fainter stars don't shine bright enough to excite the color receptors in our eyes, and will appear white unless you use optical aid to gather more light. Finally, we show symbols for many of the brighter deep sky objects. Many of these objects are too dim to see with the naked eye, but the ones on our map do appear nice through binoculars or a small telescope. Remember that Astronomy.com offers a host of tools to help you make the most of your time under the stars. Senior editor Michael Bakich's weekly podcast highlights three objects you can see in the night sky. Check it out at astronomy.com slash podcast. Astronomy.com's Star Dome is an interactive tool similar to the one I just talked about that gives you an accurate map of the night sky from your exact location at any time of the night. Give it a test drive at astronomy.com slash Star Dome. Subscribe to Astronomy Magazine and you'll get access to the full version of Star Dome. Finally, a great way to never miss sky events like comets, meteor showers, or planetary appearances is to subscribe to our free email newsletter, which includes a link to my weekly observing guide, The Sky This Week. Sign up today at astronomy.com slash newsletter or visit astronomy.com slash sky this week. Thanks for watching. To see more helpful videos like this one, visit astronomy.com slash videos.